Welcome to Be Your Own Best Coach with JJ. Today, our topic is Mount Know-It-All or Know-It-All Mountain. We have all been there. Now, what's that about? Are you a know-it-all or do you know a know-it-all? <laughs> have you ever been to a dinner party or met somebody and they start talking about a topic and maybe you are really proficient in that topic. So you know a lot about that topic. You may even be an expert in that topic and you listen to somebody who you know has got limited knowledge about what they're talking about and may not even know it but they speak with so much confidence in the room that people believe that they're really knowledgeable in that topic. This is what we're going to be talking about today. Know it all mountain and we've all been there and we'll all continue to go there because we will think that we know all there is to know on some subjects, particularly when we have limited knowledge about it. Ironic, isn't it? So I love this quote, the more I learn, the more I realize how much I don't know. That's by Albert Einstein. I'll say it again. The more I learn, the more I realize how much I don't know. And it is so true because what happens is as you're learning, you're expanding your thinking and then you realize, shit, I thought this was a simple topic, but it's a lot bigger. And the more I learn about it, the more stuff I realize is part of this subject. So I want to talk about the know-it-all. And I would love to say that that's not me. <laughs> I would say, love to say it's not me, but guess what? It is me. It is you. You may not like me saying that. <laughs> when when I was young, my mum used to say, oh, here we go, know-it-all. <laughs> because when I was young, particularly in my teens, I thought I knew everything, right? And mum used to jokingly say, oh, you know, stop being a know-it-all. But we all in times will think that we know what we're talking about when we actually don't. And the thing is, so we know it all, is, is sometimes we have limited amount of experience. But because we haven't really looked outside and got a lot more knowledge, we actually don't know that there's more to it than there is. And so we can be full of confidence. You know, have you ever spoken to someone about particularly, you know, it might be business, parenting, relationships, and then suddenly someone will pipe up or politics or whatever the world issues and they start sprouting this stuff and you think, you, you don't know what you're talking about, right? If you have got a lot of knowledge in that subject, if you haven't got a lot of knowledge in that subject, sometimes we can go on the ride with them and think, oh, well, this person is speaking with confidence. They must know what they're talking about, right? Right. And so we can go on that ride with them. So it's really important that, and respectfully, I say this, and I got this from one of my mentors, and I've said this before in podcasts, is when people give you advice, respectfully in your mind, say, who are they and what have they done? Because they can be saying, I've got this, you know, this is what you should do with your finances, or this is what you should do in your business, or this is what you should do in your relationship, or this is how you should parent your kids. But if they haven't got a successful business, if they haven't got a successful relationship, how do they, so who are they and what have they done? You know, there's so many people giving business advice when they have, haven't even had a, their own business. So we've got to be really mindful that when we have limited knowledge, all of us, we can often think that we know more than we actually do. Now, this is known as the Dunning-Kruger effect. So it's a cognitive bias 
whereby people with low ability, so they've got low ability or expertise, uh, or uh, regarding any certain type of topic or skill, but they overestimate their ability. And so what can happen is they actually think they're really confident with what they know because they've got a, a limited amount of knowledge. So they think they know everything but they actually don't know a lot. And so with all that little knowledge that they have, because they don't see outside their bubble, they actually think they know a lot, but they actually don't. Have you ever watched a show like a singing competition, like Australia's Got Talent or uh, The X Factor or whatever it is, and people come to audition and <laughs> they... You know, they might be asked by the judges before they sing, how do you, you know, how long have you been singing or what type of singer do you think you are? Do you think you could win this competition? And it's interesting to see when people will say, I am a great singer. Like, I think I'm better than Whitney Houston. I'm a fantastic singer. And I think, I, I not only think, I know that I can win this competition. And you think, oh, maybe this person's going to be fantastic. And the judges go, okay, well, here we go. Good luck. And they start to sing. And then you see the cringy faces of the judges because that person cannot sing at all. They're off key. Or maybe they're just a real amateur, but it sounds really bad. They might have gone, though, to their local karaoke place and won an award in their town and because their town doesn't know any better they think well you're the best singer in the town and their mum and their dad are so proud and they talk about their singer in in the family and so that singer thinks in their small bubble of knowledge that they are great singers but they have no idea what it takes to be a singer because they just sing at karaoke, right? They haven't learnt singing. They don't know about the different pitches, the notes they have to hit. They have no idea the pausing or the breathing, any of that, because they haven't learnt that. But they don't know that. So in their mind, they're a great singer and they can win the competition. And so it's really important for us to understand how this works is that we are all or we all have been and continue to be know-it-all some, sometimes because we will think that we know a topic and we don't. And so it's a real watch out for us. You know, I, I find with my business and I'm a business coach, I'm a public speaking coach and I'm a forever learner. I love to learn. And even though I've been doing my craft for a very long time, I know there's always more to learn. But it's interesting when I get new potential clients or maybe even not potential clients. I might be at a barbecue and someone might say to me, what do you do? And I might say, look, I'm a business coach, a life coach, and I teach public speaking. And it's interesting how many times People will say to me, oh, oh, I'm, oh, yeah, public speaking is easy for me. I'm really confident. Just do it. You know, just do it. And, and uh, yeah, I'm really good at it. I'm like, oh, okay, that's fantastic. And, you know, I've been doing it for years and, uh, you know, I've, I'm, I'm quite skilled in it actually. I'm like, oh, that's fantastic. And I genuinely think, okay, well, this is interesting because I'm going to have a, an interesting conversation with someone that's been doing it for, you know, they might say I've been public speaking for 20 years in my job. And uh, and and so often I'll say to them, oh, great. So, so what sort of, you know, what sort of techniques are important to you in regards to speaking? And I might start to ask questions. Now, this is when it sort of unravels because... I could be speaking to someone that is the, that's an expert and I have spoken to people that, that have got a lot of knowledge, but if I'm speaking to someone that's on know-it-all mountain with small amount of knowledge but high confidence, 
it will start to, I will start to hear uh, and they'll start to get stuck with answering questions because they don't know the knowledge. So I might say, how do you use, you know, how do you find using the satire moves? What sort of uh, one do you, you know, do you like to use the most? And their face will go blank. It'll be like, what? Satire moves? What are they? Or I might say about the archetypes that they, they might use. Or I might say uh, in regards to their WIFM. Or I might say, what about TTT? How do you love that? Isn't that a great technique? And I will see that they are just blank because they don't know it. So in their mind, it could be as simple as they've got up on their feet, feeling confident, talking, and then they go, I'm a great speaker. I know how to speak without knowing any of the techniques at all. And and maybe not even knowing what the feedback is from their audience because your perception of you can be very different from the perception that others have of you. And so it's really interesting speaking to someone, whether it be public speaking or whatever it is, and seeing really how much knowledge they have or have not got. And it's really interesting when... For many years, so when I was young, I wasn't brought up in a religious family, for instance, and I had some assumptions, beliefs around religion. But I thought that I knew some basic stuff. I thought I knew basic stuff and it wasn't until, and and people have really strong opinions about religion, right? And it was my son, actually, that got me on the journey to start to, to, to explore this because religion is a very important subject. History is a very important subject. Politics is a very important subject. Mindset is a very important subject. Us as humans should be really understanding and being insatiable learners about life, and that's all part of life. And so... I'm probably a little bit embarrassed to tell you guys that at 53 that I'm still just learning about religion. Like really I should have learnt a long time ago because it's about life. How can you have strong opinions about something unless you really dive in to a certain subject? But I had this, there's so many assumptions that I had around religion that I had no idea about, no idea. Like I had no idea, and this might sound crazy to some of you that know this stuff, but I had no idea that there were different Bibles, right? So I thought there was the one Bible, which I I believe there is one, one true Bible, but there's, there's all of these Bibles, You know, there's the King James Version Bible. There's the new King James. There's all these other Bibles and and with changed words and all that sort of stuff. And it's like, I had no idea. I thought there was just one. How come there's so many of them? Where do they all come from, right? So from a religion point of view, I had limited amount of knowledge. You know, I had no idea, and, and this might be a surprise for some people listening here, that you know some people will say i'm not religious you know i'm not religious or whatever yet they have a statue of a buddha in their house now some people go oh it's only a statue but when you learn about the history and what what that meaning is it's not just a statue it's like having a you know it's a, it's a it's like a um it means that you're you're, you know, that you're a Buddhist, you know, this is the Buddhist God in their mind, right? Um, and so it's really understanding, you know, and even little things like the uh, where people put a little G for God and a big G, like the big G is God and the little G is a fake God. Like I had no idea what that was. So I'm still learning so much. I'm very, like I'm an infant stage learning about religion right now 
but I'm learning. And I think when we can humble ourselves, that's when we're we're able to learn. <clears throat> Talking about the Dunning-Kruger effect, you know, we talked about the confidence. So we've got confidence here and then we've got the competence, how skilled we are down here. And often when we're on know-it-all mountain, we're high in confidence, but we're low in competence. So we're low in skill or knowledge. But because we only know what we know and we're in our little bubble, it seems like we know everything, right? And and it's even interesting, like when I was going to learn Italian, I had no idea, and some of you will know this, others will not, that even speaking Italian, that they have words like a feminine word and a masculine word. Like I had no idea. That makes it a little bit more complex to learn, right? But when I'm on the mountain of know-it-all, I have no idea. I'm like, oh, well, I know how to say ciao and, you know, I know all the basics. Oh, how hard can it be, right? <laughs> because my limited bubble here is telling me that it's no, is not really a lot to learn. When you start to learn and you expand that, you think, oh, there's a lot more to it than I thought there was. So we go up to Know-It-All Mountain. We're high in confidence, but we're low in competence and we may not even know it until maybe someone questions us and then we go, oh, shit, and we go down into the valley of despair <laughs> because of the, I thought I knew this. I thought I knew this stuff. Now I don't know, and it's a lot harder than I thought it was. You know, it's 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 like me reading the Bible for the first time, going, I just don't like some of it. I'm just like, I just don't get it. Like this is this is challenging stuff. So you get a little bit into despair, and that's with anything that we're learning. Anything that we're learning, we will always go down usually into the valley of despair when we realize that we need to learn more or maybe it's more challenging than we thought it was. Now, the key is down in that valley of despair, we can either get stuck there and we can say, you know what, I'm not going to learn anymore. I'm not going to read this Bible anymore. I'm just, I'm not going to read or do whatever anymore. I'm not going to learn this skill Italian anymore. And you stop because it becomes too hard. Or you push through and you say, you know what, I'm going to learn more about this. And then you go up and that's where you get right up into Hope Island and that's when you've got, you get more confidence and more competence and you go on the upscale again. But still when you've got, when you're in Hope Island, when you've got more confidence and competence, you are still more aware of more things that you need to learn now. Like it's there's just this whole depth of information that you need to learn. So be mindful of that because you can still be like, oh, there's so much to learn. But that's a good place to be because then that's when you can be open to learn and you, and, and then you can, can explore that even further. And so... Making sure that we don't get stuck in that valley of despair and knowing sometimes, and it's hard to know because a lot of the times we won't know when we're on know-it-all mountain and we think we know everything and we actually don't. It's like with the, there's stuff that we know that we know, you know, so I often say this when we're learning something. There's stuff that we know that we know. We all are like, I know how to speak English, right? I know that. I know that I'm fluent in English, so I know that stuff. So I know that I know how to speak English. I'm confident of that. But then there's the stuff that I know, I, I don't know that I don't know. Or, sorry, I, that I, there's the stuff that I know that I don't know. That's better. The stuff that I know that I don't know. So that's when I might say, I don't know how to speak Spanish. And that's usually where we go to learn stuff, right? So we go, okay, I don't know how to learn Spanish, so therefore I'm going to learn it. It's the stuff that we know that we don't know. 
Then there's stuff that we forget that we know. And then there's the stuff. Now, this is where the gold is. This is the stuff that we don't know that we don't know, right? And we usually have to get a coach to help us go there because we don't even know it's there. So it's just like speaking to someone about public speaking that doesn't know about TTT or Satya moves or the archetypes or the hero's journey or whatever it is. And they're looking going, what is she talking about? And suddenly you're planting seeds and they're like, oh, there's stuff that I didn't even know existed. That's interesting. And that's where the gold is. So when we're on Know It All Mountain, we have no idea about the stuff that we don't know that we don't know. And the thing is that when we're an amateur, in whatever area it is, whether it be speaking Italian, public speaking, whatever it may be, we're amateurs. And so therefore our bubble of knowledge is smaller. And the bubble of knowledge of what we think we don't know is smaller, right? So it's like, oh, okay, well, we, you know, there, there's some things that I might need to learn, but, you know, probably will take me a week, right? You underestimate what you need to learn because you, you're you looking outside and you're going, well, there's not really that much to learn because you can see what you, you need to learn. Maybe I just need to learn some key phrases and, and then it'll all come together and in a week I'll know how to speak fluent Spanish. But when you're more of an expert in whatever field that is, you know that there's so much. Like I look at my books here and I'm just in the, in the those of you that aren't seeing this uh, podcast or just hearing, I'm just pointed to my bookshelves or all my books. And I look at that and I go, wow, there is so, if I look at each topic, there is so much to learn. There's so much insight from different people, from different leaders different opinions, some that I agree with, some that I don't agree with, you know, so there's so much to learn in every single topic. And so it's really understanding as an expert that your bubble is bigger. You can see outside that more clearly because you've been exploring it, you're, you've grown your bubble and you actually know that there is more, you've had this a bit of an awakening to say, oh, hold on a minute, there is a lot more to this than what I first thought. And as I said, you can either, you can go down into the valley of despair there and get stuck or just retreat and go, no, I'm not doing this anymore. Or you can go through that and say, right, I'm just going to continue. I'm going to dive deep into this and learn more. And that's where you can get into Hope Island where you've got more confidence and more competence at the same time. So one thing I think that we need to have, because as I said, we all, we all at some stage will be on Know It All Island and not even freaking know it. Like what do we do? We just need to make sure we have intellectual humility. Being humble, like really being humble and knowing that there's stuff that we don't know that we don't know. And being able to say it's okay to be wrong. And because what we think we know can often prevent our learning. It can cut us off from learning more because we dismiss anything. We dismiss somebody or information that might conflict with what we think we believe just based on maybe one or two or three different people's opinions rather than really diving deep. And it's really important for us to explore and get into rooms where people know more than us. It's just like a chess player thinking, you know, you might play chess with your friends and you might beat the pants off them and you might beat the pants off all your friends and your mum and dad and your whoever it is, anyone in your network, and then suddenly you might go, gee, I'm pretty good. I might go to a chess club 
and go and play and then you go there and they whip your butt because you didn't actually realize it was there's so much more to learn and that's when you humble yourself and say okay there is a lot more to learn and get excited about it don't let your pride get in the way of your learnings and I see this all the time I have people that I've spoken to about say public speaking <laughs> like oh I'm good you know I'm yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I've been doing it for 20 years. And I've even seen them on their feet and thinking, well, they need a lot of work. But I think that in my head, of course, I'm not one of those wankers that go and say, okay, well, you need some support. No, I wouldn't do I would never do that. But that person has just, their pride has prevented them from learning. They're just like, this will do. Like, this is how I am. I feel confident and I don't need to know any more. And so they're really reaching a small amount of their potential by doing that, by being prideful. So we've got to humble ourselves. And our assumptions and generalizations are big watch outs because we can assume we know so much about something and then we can generalize it and then we can publicly publicly sprout all this information to everybody when we really haven't got the knowledge itself. So we all have to be humble and we need to be mindful of our assumptions and our generalizations. So I trust that that's been valuable for you to really understand that we all at some stage will be on know-it-all mountain, that for us to be humble and for us to not let our pride get in the way of us making sure that we challenge our thinking. So there's four things I want to leave with you. Number one is be humble. Be humble. Challenge your thinking. Have childlike curiosity. Childlike curiosity is like what, you know, they're always exploring. It's like Curious George. And the last one is be a forever learner and it's okay to be wrong it's okay to make mistakes but for us to be the best that we possibly can be we've got to be a forever learner and we've got to be humble so intellectual humility is something I think that we should all strive for <music>